In this video, we'll find the vertex of some quadratic functions by hand. We'll also pull out the TI calculator and graphically find the vertex, as well as identifying some other points graphically. In the first example, we have the function f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. I notice that this is a quadratic function. It has the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is negative 2, b is negative 8, and c is 3. We're asked to first find the vertex of the function by hand. Recall that the vertex of a quadratic function f of x occurs where x equals negative b over 2a. So to find the x value of the vertex, I need to use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. So it's negative the b value, so negative negative 8 over 2 times the a value, so 2 times negative 2. So the numerator is positive 8, the denominator is negative 4, and so x is equal to negative 2. Now the vertex is a point, not just an x value. So we need to find the y value when x equals negative 2. I go to my function and I plug in an x value of negative 2 and evaluate. The function is negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. So it's negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 3. So the vertex is the point x is negative 2, y is 11. The second part of the problem asks us to identify the vertex graphically, meaning I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and enter the function, use the graph of the function to identify the vertex. So in the graphing calculator, I'm going to first go to the y equals menu and put the function in. Now, according to my own calculations by hand, the vertex occurred at negative 2, comma 11. I want to create a window that allows me to see at least that point. I'm going to go ahead and use a window from negative 10 up to 10 on the x's, with tick marks every one unit. And on the y's, I want to see as high as 11, so maybe I'll do a negative 20 up to 20, with tick marks every five units. I use the graph, all right, and, and it looks to me like our answer of negative 211 is probably correct. What we're looking for and seeking out is this highest point on the graph. The vertex is the highest point on this parabola. In order to find it, we're going to use the Calculate menu. Notice that above the Trace button, it says Calc. To access that, I hit the second Trace and it accesses the Calculate menu. Once I'm in the Calculate menu, I want to find the maximum of that function, the maximum, the highest point on the graph. So I'm going to select Option 4. So I hit number 4. It takes me back to the graph and it's asking me a series of questions down here in the lower left-hand corner. It says, can you give me a left bound for that maximum. It's asking us to put the cursor to the left side of that vertex. So I'm going to hold down the left arrow key and move the cursor to the left side of the vertex. Anywhere to the left, just a little bit to the left side. Then I press enter. Now in the bottom right hand cor left hand corner of the screen, it asks us to identify a right bound. I want to put the cursor on the right side of the vertex. So I hold down the right arrow key and move it to the right side of the vertex and press enter. And then notice you have these little arrows up here and the arrows are pointing inward and in between those arrows you should find your vertex. You've created a little sandwich around your vertex, a vertex sandwich. 
and your calculator is just about ready to search between those two arrows to find the highest point within that vertex sandwich and it will find the vertex. The last question it's asking down here on the bottom left hand corner is guess. It's saying can you give the calculator a guess as to approximately where the vertex occurs. So you can put your cursor approximately near the tippy top of that graph and press enter. And notice it says down here maximum. It's giving me an x value. x equals negative 1.9999999 and y is 11. Now, we found by hand that the vertex was exactly x equals negative 2, y equals 11. And your calculator, when you did this on your own calculator, might say something slightly different here for the x. Your calculator might say negative 2.00001 or negative 1.99979. It something close to negative 2. Unfortunately, it often has a little bit of error here in the x value. It very rarely would report exactly the right answer of x equals negative 2. But clearly, if you look at this number, negative 1.99999999, that's negative 2. Okay, so just kind of remember when you use the vertex feature, this maximum feature, it sometimes gives you this error and it's not the exact right accurate answer. You need to use your own brain and realize that that really is the number negative 2. Lastly, in this problem, we're asked to graphically find f of negative 4, f of 2, and f of 8. So now that I've created this graph on my calculator, if I want to identify f of negative 4, we're saying find the point on the graph where the x value is negative 4. Now the way you can do this quite quickly is by pressing the trace button and then typing the x value you're interested in negative 4. Notice when I type that on the bottom left hand corner it says x equals negative 4 and press enter. It will put your cursor right on top of x equals negative 4 and it reports the y value is 3. And so we've concluded from the graph f of negative 4 is 3. Again if I want to find f of 2 I hit trace, type 2, press enter. Puts my cursor right on that point and it says when x is 2, y is negative 21. So f of 2 is negative 21. If I want to find f of 8, I hit trace, 8, enter. When x is 8, y is negative 189. So f of 8 is negative 189.